here at UFC Gym Indy headquarters. My name is Jordan. Alongside me, as always, will be Josh and Donovan. And welcome to our first podcast for UFC Gym Indianapolis. Awesome. Glad to be here. Glad to be <laughs> here. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, we are excited. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't forget to follow us on our social media pages, our Instagram page, UFC Gym Whitestown, Facebook, UFC Gym Whitestown as well. And then our YouTube channel, UFC Gym Indianapolis. Check out all our podcasts, all our information, live look at the facilities and the gyms soon to be coming, right? Mid-June for yes. Whitestown location. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then uh, you'll see some more popping up here and there. Today's specific subject we're going to cover is recovery. So just to kind of tap into not necessarily the Webster's definition, but Donovan's definition. Those of you that don't know, Donovan is our fitness director. Josh here is our assistant general manager and sales manager. My, I am the general manager of the facility at Whitestown. So Donovan, dive in. What is recovery? Thanks, Jordan. So to me, <laughs> uh, recovery is pretty much about how badly you can beat up your body during exercise uh, to make it bigger, better, faster, stronger, and then how well you can bring it back to life. That's recovery to me. So every day kind of strenuous exercise, how we recover Mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. day before to prepare for our next workout. That's right. Recover so you can get back to it, do it again. There we go. There we go. So recovery includes all kinds of different things, right? We're talking supplementation. We're talking stretching. We're talking hours of sleep throughout the night. We'll touch on a few of those subjects today specifically, Um, but kind of want to get into a little bit of of our own personal stories as far as recovery. What do we lack? What do we do? Well, um, I'll start. I don't sleep well at all. And I feel sluggish when I wake up. And then now all of a sudden I switch to early morning workouts, uh, (laughs) because I'm dumb like that. And I'm used to working out in the evening. So getting in the workout early because I know I'm too lazy to do it after I get off work, right. With all the hard work we put in here at HQ, getting home and just wanting to relax. So sleep is one thing I really kind of lack on when it comes to that. Go ahead, Josh. What what about you? Um, uh, I think, uh, my biggest thing is when I'm in train mode, it's just getting those rest days in, right? Like I'm just the, the old joke of, uh, what's, what's my rest muscle and how do I train that? That's just my, it's hard for me to do that. So, um, I try to do active rest days on those, on those days when I really know I really need to, but I've gotten better in my old age to uh, listen to my body a little bit more and do it, but that's kind of where I would say I lack a little bit. I just don't recover really at all like I should, and I know it, and I just don't do it. Like, I'll work out really hard. I'm sore. I'm tight, and I don't do anything about it, and then I just wonder, like, oh, why do I hurt so bad? It's because I'm not recovering. Right. <laughs> No, I need to. Yeah, I I 100% agree. And that's, I mean, I could go on a list of things that I don't do properly when it comes to recovery. Mm -hmm. Um, Stretching is definitely one of them. Oh, yeah. I tell myself every day that I'm going to stretch for about 20 to 30 minutes following the workout. Ambitious. And I don't. I eat, I take a shower, I hydrate. Yep. I drink my protein. Shout out to DotFit. (laughs) and and that's about it you know so that's one thing i could get into um i know one common misconception is stretching before a workout how do you guys feel about that i don't like static stretching before workouts obviously um doing some more active stretching some more uh things like that i think especially if you're going to do some some high intensity things and some uh, like plyometrics and stuff, getting that, getting those muscles fired a little bit, those fast twitch going, but I'm not a big fan of static stretching. Agreed. I did a whole paper on it at uh ball state chirp, chirp to where uh, stretching before a workout, a strength training workout actually inhibits muscle growth. So yeah. I'm not a fan of it. Yeah. Yeah. Before it, right. definitely should do it after, but like you, I think about it, but I, I don't be about it. I mean, it's always in my <laughs> mind, yeah. right? Our hearts are just, in the right place. I just don't want to do it because right. I'm done working out. Yeah. And, you know, I we also, need trainers. Yeah. Right. To tell us to right. Do it. Exactly. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Plug to personal training, yeah. private coaching that we have at UFC gym. They'll stretch you out, do really well. We'll talk more about our recovery products that we do offer and our recovery services that we offer at UFC gym Whitestown as well. But, Touching back, and I 100% agree with you guys. Static stretching before a workout, bad. 
right? And what we mean by static stretching would be a 10 to 30 second hold. Um, normally what you would do after a workout, once your muscles are nice and loose. Now, after a workout, I always prefer a five to 10 minute cool down, right? Let your heart rate return back to normal. Let your blood vessels return back to normal. Let all that blood flow get back in, into your heart and shun it away from your muscles. So, um, a lot of people just kind of start stretching right afterwards. I'm not necessarily a fan of that just because we don't want to restrict any blood flow to those muscles yeah. after we work out, right? Five to 10 minutes, cool down, hop on a bike, hop on a treadmill, nice, easy walk, let your, let your body recover. Right. Um, and I also did a paper as well on static stretching, the myths of stretching before or after a workout and what it does. And it's very similar to what you said, um, at university of Indianapolis, go hounds, bark, bark, I guess. <laughs> I, don't, a, I don't know. They bark? No. <laughs> they bark. <laughs> They're yeah. great. Hounds. Do. <laughs> they run. <laughs> so yeah, I'm 100% in agreement with you guys. So we do have recovery services offered at UFC Jim Whitestown. So mm. I know a lot of you have probably seen on Instagram, um, different recovery facilities, right. That offer cryotherapy. They offer percussion therapy. They offer, um, Norma Tech compression therapy, things like that. They're usually separate from gyms, right? This is a whole new concept to Indianapolis is the fact that a gym has private coaching. It has dumbbells, free weights, everything, BJJ, Muay Thai, all kinds of different classes as well. So it's kind of a boutique gym and a commercial gym as well as a recovery center. Mm -hmm. So Donovan, dive into a little bit what the recovery center includes. For sure. Should have brought my laptop. Told you. I have uh, so we've got Norma Tech boots. We've got Norma Tech hip sleeves. We've got Norma Tech arm sleeves. Um, and if you're not familiar with those, if you've ever seen – ESPN like in a locker room after a game and these guys have these big space boots on their arms and their legs it's those things um, so we've got those we've got stretching tables uh, we've got the hyper volts which I know you've seen on Facebook Instagram everywhere uh, what else do we have red light therapy massage beds hydro massage hydro massage it's all there yep. yeah that was one of the biggest things I was most excited about when I signed on with UFC gym because I've had my fair share of injuries and things. And I saw that we had that and that was huge for me. Um, I think once we get open and people can see that recovery, that recovery room that we have, it's going to be, it's going to be huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's and, nothing like it. Yeah. Nothing. Seriously. Yeah. And, and like I said, I mean, no gyms had it before in Indianapolis. This is a, this is a concept that's been kind of exposed out in the West coast and the East coast and, you know, you know, South Florida area, but as far as Indianapolis goes, even being new to the fitness scene in Indianapolis, since it's been growing past four or five years, pretty well, pretty steady before that, not a big abundance of fitness facilities other than, you know, your basic orange theories and so on and so on. So, but you know, compression therapy is important, right? Because we don't really take care of our bodies in the way that we can't sit there and wrap our hands around our ankles and squeeze our muscles and do that and have private massage therapists as much as awesome as that would be, um, working on us every day after the workout. So what the Norma tech boots do kind of, you know, coming from the healthcare f uh, setting, we had our compression devices and it kind of made your limbs, whatever area was working on into a, bo a, a bottle of toothpaste, mm -hmm. right? Squeeze from the bottom back up, mobilizes the fluid, helps lymph return, which is good for immune system, um, helps reduce inflammation, send red blood cells to those muscles, really helps um, the recovery process in a whole. Um, but it's, it's, it's just a new concept that people are starting to get into, just like your average weekend warrior. Athletes have been doing this for years. So why have general population not been taking advantage of that? And that's because these recovery centers are new and we have all that all in one, all inclusive at one facility. Right. So, um, Donovan, talk more about red light therapy and let's talk more about the hydro massage and the hyperbolt. So the red light therapy, um, there's no way I'll cover all the benefits right now, but if you're curious about it, go to juve, J O O V dot com. They've got a real quick, uh, five minute video that goes over it. But basically so they're called red light therapy tanning booths, but it doesn't actually tan you. There's no change to the color of your skin. So the name is kind of um, confusing. It's actually the opposite of tanning because we know 
the downsides of tanning. Um, this pretty much corrects all of those. In addition to that, increases collagen, can help reduce uh, stretch marks, increases testosterone, aids in fat loss. I mean, the benefits are just through the roof. So it looks like a walk-in, stand-up tanning booth, but it doesn't actually tan you. What was the other thing I forgot? I think that covered it, right? Yeah. Josh, you can dive yep. more into the Hypervolt since you brought your little toy here. Yeah, Hypervolt's, um, if you're not familiar with it, the compression, the percussion here, I mean, it gets going here. This is a great thing if you have somebody that can kind of work on your back, work in your muscles. You can do it on yourself, get in your legs. You can kind of see it gets in there. Um, it's like a personal massager, honestly. It gets in there. It can work out any... Uh, knots that you have any tightness in there and gets that gets that flowing it's I, I swear by these things you have different different heads on here that you can put on so some of those so we'll have we'll have those where trainers can uh work on you with these get in get in your back get in those knots and work them out for you um a lot better than just putting that pressure in with uh with hands so these things are these things are awesome yeah it really helps with <clears throat> stiffness and soreness and things like that mm-hmm. and another thing that i kind of used it for when i worked with it earlier um in my you know, fitness career was warming up and cooling down, right? You know, dynamic warm ups as far as specific to the exercise you're going to perform that day, like you were saying, Josh, mm-hmm. with plyometrics. Obviously, you want to stretch the lower body, you want to do some explosive movements, some hip raises, um, high knees, things like that to get prepared dynamically or moving rather than static. But with the hypervolt, you can literally start shunning blood to those muscles right off the bat. Yep. And it's a really neat tool, um, not too expensive. I think they're on sale like 50, 50 to a hundred dollars off right now, two ninety nine for the base model, three forty nine for this one right here, mm-hmm. which is usually four hundred bucks. So, um, like Josh said, lots of different pressure points. So you have your bullet attachment, you have a soft head attachment, more for the muscle massage. Bullets gonna um provide provide direct pressure to pressure points. Uh, there's the fork to use it around certain areas that are kind of hard to reach mm-hmm. that are very bony. So you can pinpoint different muscle groups around that area. So really cool piece of uh, equipment there. Probably one of the cheaper options you can get when it comes to that. Like, you know, personal massage therapist, mm-hmm. right? For yep. $400, I'll do that. Well, yeah. Outside the technicalities of it, it feels great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. the biggest part. It does. You got to get used to it. Mm-hmm. Cause it it's yeah. a love-hate relationship, <laughs> like a foam roller. Kind <laughs> right. Of, yeah. <laughs> Right. It does have yeah. s- different speed settings too. So you can kind of ta- tailor it to how you're feeling and how uh, aggressively you want to get a knot worked out or how you want it to do. So it, it definitely has, has everything you could want on there. And if you guys are working with these with your trainer right now, if you have one and you feel pain, you feel discomfort throughout a session with the Hypervolt, just drop that person and come see us because it shouldn't necessarily, it, you should be discomfort. Yes. But as far as pain goes, I know I've worked with some trainers in the past that stretch people to the point of pain rather than discomfort. Right. And that's a big no, no and exercise science and exercise physiology, getting into the deep uh, diving issues when it comes to personal training and people's expertise. So, you know, here at UFC gym, we're all nationally certified and we have degrees in kinesiology, exercise science, so on and so on. I know us three all do, right? So speaking on these things and having a little bit more education on muscle anatomy and how to work it is way more important. So that's one benefit of UFC gym for sure. And all of our coaches have to be hypervolt certified as well to use these. Correct. Yep. So we have to know what's going on. They're going to work on us three before they can work on a person. That's right. right. So we can give them a feedback. lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just mean, to probably, be sure. Just, yeah. just a few hours. Maybe a day. every day. I mean, yeah. That's about it. Yeah. Or the training package. Just to be certain. Can never be too safe. So warm up recovery, right? Um, static stretching after, just mm-hmm. to recap, mm-hmm. dynamic stretching before. Yep. We get moving. You know, you don't walk on a treadmill for five minutes just to hop on a bench press, right? right. We need to work out our chest <laughs> muscles, not yeah. our lower body, even though it is a compound lift. Um, And then to talk about sleep, right? I think that's something that a lot of us, and probably now with quarantine and what's going on with this whole situation and the climate right now, I think sleep is something that a lot of us are probably having issues with. My sleep schedule is completely off, Mm -hmm. completely off, because I'm used to being up in the gym working early, right? And then there's probably a lull in the middle of the day where I can get my workout in, and that's what I'm used to. But now there's, there's none of that. And I know some of us, including us, are probably working more now than we were when gyms Mm -hmm. were open. Yeah. Just getting prepared, making sure we're doing the right things as far as preparation for cleaning, 
uh, making sure we're hiring the right people, being very picky about trainers and coaches. Making and people, podcasts. Making you know. podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> staying really busy doing that. Um, shout out to producer Chris for putting this all together for us here. So sleep, I mean, six to nine hours a night is is probably a good benchmark to go off of. Would you say, would you would you agree with that? Good to shoot for. Yeah. I mean, another thing that a lot of people don't think of when they're thinking to sleep though is it's really nice to have your room cool too. I mean, that helps with your recovery, especially if you're working out, you're training a lot. I mean, that just think about like when you go get cryo and things like that, that that cold therapy. If you can keep your room pretty cool in there, that helps with that recovery aspect of it too when you're sleeping. So it's another. What do, you, what do you set your room to when you sleep? What's the temperature? Oh man, I'm never over sixty eight. And I got yeah. a and I got a fan blasting on me. Uh, well, my significant other won't let me go below seventy. Oh my! Or else she will have, you know, full Eskimo gear on yeah. underneath the covers. So, mm-hmm. uh, but before that, when I was uh, young and single, um, probably sixty six, sixty seven. Yeah. yeah, that was. I'm a, good a sixty five sleeper. Wow. Yeah, yeah I'm never wow. never sixty eight's about the max I can go, but uh, I always 65. have the the fan full blast. Right next to Yes, me. absolutely. I do that for, I say it's for white noise, but it's not. It's to make it cooler. I fall asleep to the sound of box fan. If you say, Alexa, play box fan. She'll just play a box fan until you wake up. That's a true story. <laughs> That's what I sleep to every night. Every night. What is box fan? You could That's just, just give me a box fan. Could, but this is a box <laughs> fan in, a, in an Alexa. She'll play any sound you want. Does box it, fan's one of them. Does it sound like legit? <laughs> <laughs> it's just that all night. I think Did you record it for asleep. her? That sounded just, is that, you were the one? Yep. I said, just play my special sound all night. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you can set routines, right? You can say that to Alexa. That's right. Play my special sound. Mm-hmm. And she'll do it. You're well behind. This is where we go off script. Box right. I told you I was going to oh, do mm-hmm. it. Here it comes. That's okay. There's a, there's a tab in here for that, right? It has to tie with sleep. Yeah, I think, right? absolutely. Yeah. I mean, what what helps you sleep? Exactly. Right? That's, that's For me, it's point. box fan sound. There you go. Yeah, I love my sleep, though. Ever since I got watch that tracks it, it's huge to me. I can tell, too. I can tell when I wake up, I'll look at it. If I'm feeling kind of off, I'll be like, man, how much sleep I get? And it, it's usually, and it'll set my sleep score, everything. Um, I can tell when I get a good amount of sleep and when I'm rolling around and not sleeping well, I can tell the differences. So these things help me a lot as far as that. Cause you think about, you'd always do, okay, it's midnight. If I go to sleep now, I'll get five hours of sleep, six hours of sleep. But then you think about it. I mean, everybody wakes up in the middle of the night, you roll around. That's not really, doesn't really incorporate these things track pretty well about that. So that's, that's huge for me. I check that thing every day. Does everybody do that? I, Cause I, I'll count down to the minute of how much sleep I'm going to get if I fall asleep at that point. And I think sometimes maybe I keep myself up. <laughs> definitely do. do the math i don't ever remember going to sleep i just wake up like <laughs> what happened and there i am and sounds like your day. sleep is great <laughs> yeah yeah you just so yeah. Most of let's the dive more into how i mean i guess it's the box fan i that's it is i'm at, telling you right? it's the box fan right. 65 degrees i'm out mm. just in a cave yeah with a fan now granted that's only like five hours a day but for those right. five hours, I'm sleeping great. Right. Because just like everybody else, I don't sleep enough. Right. Yeah. I mean, six to nine hours is a good benchmark. But we know as we get older, right, we require less sleep. Right. That's why your grandparents are always up at four thirty, five o'clock in the morning. Um, just as you get older, you just don't need as much sleep. But as a younger person um, like myself, I don't know about you guys. No, I'm not that young. But um, seven to eight hours is probably good for me for the most part, although I probably get six on any given night mm. throughout the weekday and then Sunday sleep in sesh. So yeah. I definitely try to hit that eight. I can tell, especially, man, that's the, that's the thing. If you're, if you're training and you're, you're having hard training sessions and stuff, you can tell when your, your muscles recover and everything, just everything feels better. If you can get that, that eight hours, I try to as much as I can. I think we all do if we can, but yeah, it's, I don't fall asleep like that. Like Donovan seems to, but well, I, do, yeah. I don't know how it happens. I right. just, I just wake up. I could lay there for an hour. I have no idea. It's a mystery. I love that for you. <laughs> I'm so yeah, I'm very happy for you as well. Yeah, um, yeah, and I mean it. It de- decreases our stress levels, right? Cortisol mm. is the enemy in this world, right? They say it's more deadly than cigarettes and alcohol at this point. So, uh, with cortisol levels, right, we have increased. Um, I guess you hold on to 
you know, sugars, things like that, that help your body feel better. Carbohydrates that burn fuel. Um, and they cause that belly fat. Cortisol causes that belly fat. It slows down your metabolism. It does all, all kinds of awful things to your body. It helps with, or doesn't help with, um, cholesterol levels, right? Healthy cholesterol versus bad cholesterol, right? There's no real regulation with that with cortisol. So the issue with, with sleep is not necessarily just recovering. It's Mm. reducing your stress levels at the same time. So that's something to be conscious of, especially during this time, because you can't go out, you can't, you know, adhere to your usual social schedule with whatever you need to do. You can't go to the gym and work out until next week, right? For Hamilton County, um, even longer for the Indianapolis and Marion County areas. So really taking care of yourself. Home workouts are great. We do home workouts with UFC gym, follow our social media pages, uh, at UFC gym, Whitestown and UFC gym, Whitestown, Facebook for more information on that. We do daily workouts there. We have our class UFC gym runs through live workouts that are complimentary to everyone to check out if you have some minor equipment at home. So, um, really taking care of yourself, making sure that stress levels are decreased throughout the, throughout this quarantine until you can get back to going out and sitting on a porch and having a beer and being around your loved ones and so on and so on. So, um, yeah, I mean, recovery is huge, right? And, yeah. and the wearable technology is another thing to touch on, which is good too, right? The heart rate vari- variability, if it measures that, how well does your fight or flight system work with your rest and relax system, mm-hmm. right? The higher the variability, the better off you're going to be in the long run. So that's something to look forward to as well with UFC gym coming in, utilizing our facilities and so on. So. All right. So, but I don't think we answered my question about, do we count down the hours to sleep? Right. I want to hear you guys' thoughts at UFC gym Indy or at UFC gym Whitestown YouTube channel, UFC gym Indianapolis. Check us out. Give us your thoughts. Uh, if you do count down your sleep, is it to the hour? Is it to the 10 minute mark? Is it to the minute mark? Do we go as far as seconds? I don't, that's too much for me. It's too far. It's too far. Um, and then what you use to sleep, whether it's white noise, what your temperature setting is. I'm curious to see what everybody else is as well. I think you'll be surprised by the number of people that play box fan on Alexa. What's the over under? One. Um, one. <laughs> Can't be as many as people that actually just have a box fan, I would think. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's probably the way to go. Yeah. Right. Right. But hey, teach yeah. their own. Yeah. So we learned a lot today with our first podcast. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us, team. And we will see you on Thursday. We're going to talk and cover sports injuries and how to recover. Each of us has a unique story as far as a sports injury that we've uh, experienced in our professional careers and amateur careers. Mm -hmm. So we'll dive more into that. Hopefully we'll have some uh, special guests on, so stay tuned for that. And... I guess we are not live anymore. We're out. Thanks, team. We'll see you Thursday. (laughs) 